of disease and how it travels. Our story begins in a little village. Let's say it's your village. And let's suppose that these are the homes of your friends and neighbors. Your home is this little farm down here. And these people, why, of course, it's you and your family. Now, we see that all of you have strong, healthy bodies. Naturally, you want to keep strong and healthy. Well. That means you must help your friends and neighbors protect their health, too. For if one of your neighbors is sick, he can give his disease to you, to your family, and to everyone else in the village. Now, take your friend Joe Burns, for instance, way on the other side of town. Joe's farm is in pretty bad shape. But it's no wonder, because Joe is a very sick man. If we could look inside Joe's body, we'd see that he has a disease of the intestines. And by looking still more closely, we'd find that Joe's intestines are full of disease microbes. These tiny living creatures are the cause of his disease. But how can these tiny microbes leave Joe's sick body way up here, travel clear across the village to your home way down here, and then attack your healthy body? Well. Microbes can travel in many ways. For one thing, they can travel by water. But let's go back to Joe's place and see how they do it. First of all, we see that Joe is pretty careless. He has no latrine. He leaves his waste in the field. And wherever Joe leaves his waste, he leaves the microbes that cause sickness. But the microbes seem harmless enough in the field how can they go anywhere? Well, look up here in the sky. Soon it begins to rain. And as the rain pours down, it washes Joe's filth into the river. And so the microbes leave the field and begin their journey to you. Now, these microbes are so small, you can't see them with your naked eye. So, when the water reaches your farm, it looks clear and pure. Yet, if we could look at that water through a microscope, we'd find the same microbes we saw in Joe's body. But since the water looks clean, you don't hesitate to drink it. Now you are taking into your healthy body the microbes of Joe's sickness. Soon you, too, will be suffering with Joe's disease. Of course, if this can happen to you, it can happen to your friends and neighbors, for they get their water from the river also. So you see, water is one of the great carriers of disease. It can bring Joe's sickness to every home in the village. Now, we have seen that disease can travel by water, and yet there is still another way that Joe's disease can travel. If we go back to Joe's field, we will see that Joe's filth has become a breeding place for flies. These flies carry disease microbes, too. The microbes ride on the fly's body, on his legs. If we look at this fly's leg closely, we see that it is covered with particles of Joe's filth. And remember, in this filth are the microbes of Joe's sickness. Now, let's watch this fly and see where he goes next. Look, he joined his friend and together they leave the field. These flies are heading straight for your home. They're looking for food, and they find it on your table. Uncovered food on which the flies can walk and crawl. And wherever the flies walk, they leave some of the filth from Joe's field. So when you eat this food, you take the microbes of Joe's disease into your body, and you too will be a sick man. 
whether the microbes travel in the water or on the fly's feet, remember, it is at Joe's farm that they start their journey. So it is here, at Joe's, that the microbes must be stopped. To prevent his disease from spreading, Joe must not leave his waste in the field. He must use a latrine. Now, Joe's a pretty sick man, so we'll build a latrine for him. First, we'll choose a place a safe distance from the river. Ah, here's a good spot. Then we'll dig a hole, a good deep hole. We'll put a platform over the hole and leave an opening. Next, we'll make a cover for the opening to keep the flies out. And finally, we close everything for privacy. Simple, isn't it? Yet this latrine locks the microbes deep in the earth. The disease has been stopped at its source before it has a chance to travel to others. Of course, there are other kinds of disease that travel in other ways. We'll find an example down here in John Smith's store, where John himself has a sickness of the lungs. John's lungs are being attacked by tiny microbes. These microbes don't need water or flies to help them travel. For every time John coughs, he sprays thousands of them into the air. <coughs> now, these microbes are so tiny, they float on the air itself, and they haven't far to go. For this same air is being breathed by one of John's customers. Yes, it's your wife. Soon your wife has a sickness of the lungs, too. But this disease doesn't stop with your wife, for now she coughs <coughs> and gives the disease to you and your son. <coughs> and soon, with the whole family coughing, you spread the disease to others. In this way, John Smith's disease can attack every home in the village. Here again, the disease should be stopped at its source, and this can be done only by John Smith himself. If he must cough, he should cover his nose and mouth with a cloth. <coughs> but most important, he should go to bed in a room by himself, thus isolating his disease from his friends and neighbors. Then the village will be safe from John's disease. But there are still other diseases that travel in a very simple way. Suppose we find out what this way is. Let's go down to Bill Jones's house and see his little boy, Johnny Jones. Johnny has been ill for several days and has spots all over his body. Now, when your little boy comes to visit him, he touches Johnny's clothing and skin. And look what happened. Some of the microbes that cause Johnny's disease cling to your son's hand, and he breathes some into his mouth. Now your little boy brings the disease home to you and your wife. You carry it to your friends. And finally, Johnny's disease has spread through many homes in the village. This sickness, too, must be stopped at its source. Johnny should be kept in a room by himself. No one should be permitted to visit him. Remember, if no one touches Johnny or gets close to him, his sickness cannot spread to other families. Johnny's mother, who takes care of the sick boy, must wash her hands thoroughly after each time she touches him, for soap and water will kill microbes. We have seen that these little microbes that cause disease can travel in many different ways. And if we wish to protect our health, we must stop them at their source. It will help to stop the microbes that travel in human waste if each of us uses a latrine. It locks the microbes in the earth. It will help to stop the microbes that travel through the air if each of us will cover our nose and mouth whenever we cough. <coughs> <coughs> Remember, the microbes of disease always travel from a sick person to a well person. So, whenever possible, the sick person should be kept in a room by himself. <coughs> so that his disease cannot travel to his friends and neighbors. If each of us takes these simple precautions, 
we, our friends and neighbors, will be a healthier people. And our village will be a happier and healthier place for all.